you know, a lot of people know that I'm doing a lot of feature numbers. You got to know that my turnaround is like 24 hours. Unless it's just something crazy going on. Mm -hmm. Going to the studio, like, it's this is our job. You feel me? Like, niggas that rap. So niggas in the South done, like, we done went from selling little bags, doing what we was doing, to so we got to rap every day. Like, Walker, think about how Walker just really got on, you know, like, being for real. Walker's like a millionaire, bro. And you can't do nothing but respect this ground because he basically just taught himself how to get some money. And he records more than no disrespect. And he don't much, he might record more than Jada. Mm -hmm. So this population, this little generation right here, might miss a few of that shit. Bro, you know niggas can really sample some shit from four years ago and motherfucking act like it's original. Mm -hmm. When I did Pimp C back, <laughs> the reason I named that shit Pimp C back was because the hook said it was a hook that he used before. And I feel bad, just like it's my shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't say nothing about pimp and the shit. We miss you, pull up a lot. I don't say nothing about it. I just named it Pimp C Back because it was, take that shit off, bend over, let. and I knew that wasn't my hook. Some niggas come out of that bitch, get, you know what I mean? All that. You know what I'm saying? So just me being, like, like wanting to create, wanting to do some original shit, that's something that I, I did on my own. Like, I can't tell you. And I knew mother half the motherfucking generation wouldn't know that pimp. Because of the, the difference, he's been gone for over five years, you feel me? Yeah. So I'm already knowing, niggas might think that's my shit, and I ain't gonna, and then you don't want that nigga on your, on your line, on your Twitter, you know, you yeah. see how I got over hundred something, you see this motherfucker, oh, biting that nigga to my uncle, some yeah, nigga, yeah. you know what I mean, in my, uh -huh. in my daddy, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I went to Texas and shot it with his son and his mama. Just to kill all that. Respect. You feel me? Exactly. Come in a little shorty, and you dig, and that's how that went down. But see, I got a different outlet on just because I really, I stood out of been, I'd have been this shit a thousand times. I'd have been in Primo studio. I heard so, bro, it was one time that we came up here and worked on Player Circle albums. I'm talking about back when the Heat Makers was popping and all that, and you know I'm fans of Nori's a good friend of mine. I just did a record for him. I can name drop a day, but I don't want to do it. But basically, coming up here, I just heard so many biggie small stories to where it felt like, the city really hadn't really just recovered. Like to where me and my nigga them still use this right here on some shit that what happened, this is what we say. Man, we went to New York, man, them niggas was like, yo, but for real, before Biggie died though, the nigga, like that's how every studio we went to, that, that shit was like the craziest shit in the world. We go somewhere and a nigga have a room and be like, yeah. Yeah, but before Biggie died, he was in that mo and it was like, this shit is deep as fuck to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. everywhere we went, from Harlem, to Brooklyn, to Manhattan, uh, the, the first Buck Wild joint, I can name you joints we went to way on the other side of town, and the first hour was back when that nigga Big was living, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was deep as fuck to me, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that was years ago, but... What's, what's your definition of real hip-hop? Um... I tell you the truth, man, and this is a conversation. Once again, I don't want to name drop, but I got to because it made sense. This nigga 50 said, how can a nigga be mad at Soldier Boy? And he made the beat, rapped on it, and made a bunch of kids have a good Christmas. Everybody on the <coughs> doing their own thing and not you know, put the city first. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, everybody just kind of grew up. You know, when we first started off, everybody you know, was jogging and everything, but... It became a time where everybody got their nuts up, you know what I'm saying? One time, Luda was the man, he was so far ahead, Tilt was like on his heel and then Jeezy. So you know what I'm saying, all them niggas start, I can't imagine without y'all. So you know what I mean, so I think people just thought, you know what I mean, instead of, because you know Jeezy and Chris done songs together, so instead of just pulling each other up, people just started trying to create their own, you know, sectors and shit like that in the line. It was never no. You, Atlanta, like this New York shit is, you know, this shit crazy. You diss a nigga, you don't see him for three years in New York. You diss a nigga in Atlanta, you see him at the quick trip after the club, and it's like, you know, now who rapping? You know what I'm saying? We rapping what we doing. That's why you don't hear it a lot in Atlanta. You don't hear that beef shit. Ooh, 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 nigga, it ain't, it can't, it's too small. Nigga, know your grandma mistake. Like, your grandmama never moved, bro, since you've been young. Everybody know this, but everybody, I don't even want to say this, but everybody knows what a couple of these rappers' grandma mistake. Like, for real. That, they're like landmarks. Make a left at such and such grandma house. These, mama's house. So it's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit a little, like, the whole vibe, they're different. So you can just be on your own ball shit, throw your own all white party, all black, whatever. Pull up in your, you dig? Who get the ride first? That's kind of what it is in Atlanta, but it's not the camaraderie. Like, a nigga still get out and do some shit together. You can see that when Tip jumped on my joint. You know, I got something with Jeezy and, and it's vice versa. So it, it's a little different. 
It ain't like you got Cali putting the records together like in Florida, nigga, you know. I mean, you know, I ain't shit. You got T, you know, it's gotta work. It's, the niggas ain't doing that in the line. They ain't going out their way to do a session together. You know what I'm saying? But you hear a nigga on it and you, you know what I mean? It's easy to make. My whole career was 07 BET Awards. We did Duffel Bad Boys mm -hmm. and the Hip Hop Awards. It was a great look. And the second thing was Rock the Bells Tour. About two months ago, Mob D, this is in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, like for real, this is nothing I would have ever attended. I think the show was at like 9.30. I would have never. I get a call from Ray Brothers. Come to the show. Niggas want you to come out. So I had been kicking with him for my birthday. Um, Ray and Cavadon that came out to my party, so we just been kicking it the whole weekend. So I came out. Now, y'all know I'm a country Atlanta nigga, but I did listen to Rizzo, Jizzle, Ray, you know, Cuban, Link, all that shit. Goes all that shit. So, you know, one of the stories that I told was that, you know, goes them niggas tall, like Cavadon tall, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and Method is tall. So I remember when I first was getting in the game and Chris introduced me to Method, man, I'm like, damn, this nigga tall as hell. And so, the nigga was like, yeah, cool. And so he was hollering at me. And I think, you know, he was hollering at me and they was telling him, you know, come on stage, nigga, you know. He, so he was like, I gotta go. This tall ass nigga, you know, I thought cool, you know, the whole move was in. This tall ass nigga got on stage, started doing some crazy shit with Red Man. I was like, that nigga, that rocking like a motherfucker. <laughs> Fast forward to this Rock the Bells tour like the other month. It's, it's um, you know, Ray Cap. And uh, Ghost, and it was just that whole vibe, and them niggas actually brought me out, and you know, I did spend it and everything, but before I could leave from spend it, I think Cash Rules and some more shit came on, so really, I literally became a hype man that day, I was, that was some of the best vibe, because when I walked out, when Ray introduced me, <laughs> when I walked out, they was like, yo, this is my nigga right here, I've been fucking with this nigga for years, yo, I co-signed this shit, yo, this 2 chain. I walked out, bro, and every time I walk out on my mom, Lately, people been going crazy. I walked out that whole left side was on some. I seen everybody know, looking at me like, what the fuck this country ass nigga took? <laughs> so, so when I went over here, I was like, yeah, yeah. So it was like 20 niggas fuck with me over here. So I went over here and, you know, fuck with the campaign. So it, it eventually got loosened up. But it was one of them things where, well, it was a bunch of niggas in there like 40, 45 years old. And they was one that like, what the hell? <laughs> they was like, straight up, straight up. A nigga came in that bitch, what up? I've been listening to you, boy, this the first. I was in the back with Ray. This my boy, this the original, bro. I'm 42, boy, I've been. <laughs> boy, I need it. You know what I'm saying? So, and then these niggas still moving like young niggas. So anyway, man, I got a joint with Ray. I got a joint with all these people. And I kind of, we kind of went off the thing about Sean, but I did it because I know I could. That's another reason. And you know, it is what it is.